In this series of short tutorials, we're going to be taking a look at lens distortion and more specifically how we can address issues around lens distortion using Nuke. Uh, as you can see, I've got a, a script open at the moment uh, so we can look at several methodologies uh, and we're currently looking at this particular plate. This is a classic case where we would be performing a rig removal um, in order to patch that, uh, that dolly track that we can see on the floor there. And we understand the workflow, we know that we need to undistort this plate, uh, we need to then track this plate, um, assuming again I'm on the final frame at the moment, if I just scrub through this we can see that this, we can see that the, uh, the dolly is actually being moved for the purpose of the, uh, of the shot. Um, so we, we know that we would need to undistort before we track this and we would then know that we would need to apply the same undistort data to, the, uh, to any patches that we were applying into this scene. And the same would go for anything that we're doing later on with the green screen and through this door and various other things that we're not going to get into today. So we're going to be looking at three forms of uh, or three methodologies that uh, that the lens distortion node gives us uh, inside inside Nuke. This script has actually got some completed uh, some completed approaches that we're going to be working through today. So I'm going to kind of be pulling some of this to pieces, but I will be providing the full uh, the full script. Uh, so I'm just going to start by taking this out. We'll just come into this a little bit closer. So essentially I'm currently connected straight to the plate. Um, if I connect up to this, we can see that this is just a mat that we've got in here, this, which is just to isolate our, uh, our characters from any, any lens distortion uh, that, we're, that we're applying. We would need that same script uh, later on if we were performing a 3D track. But before we actually get into that, I just want to uh, add a um, a lens distortion node and hook up to it so that we can uh, so we can take a look at it. So I'll just bypass that uh, that that roto node for now, and we will just take a look at the uh, the lens distortion node itself. I'll just close off that uh, that roto so that we can get rid of some of the lines, and we'll just come in here in a little bit. And I'll just make some minor adjustments to the radial distortion inside this, and we can see that we can see what's happening there as I start to pull this around. The same goes for the radial distortion too. So we can see the principle behind these. These these two properties essentially allow us to really change the the distortion uh, of this uh, of this particular plate. I'll just control click on the lines just to set those back to zero before I move on. We can see that we've got a couple of output types. Uh, we have image or we have displacement. Um, displacement basically allows us to generate data that can be fed into an ST map which we'll look at at some point. But for now I'm going to make sure that I'm, uh, I'm selected on the image. We'll take a look at the lens type. So by default it's set to spherical, we can see that there's also an anamorphic option. And if I select the anamorphic option we see that we get an extra two, uh, two uh, parameters down here. We get an anamorphic squeeze and we get an asymmetric distortion. So essentially an anamorphic image is a wide shot that's been created without the use of a wide angle lens which effectively results in a stretching of the image. So by changing to this lens, we can then address any lens distortion accurately, even if it's an anamorphic image. Anyway, we'll not get into that today. We'll get back to the spherical, which then turns off these two anamorphic uh, options. We have some options down here relating to filters, which are uh, common to a lot of nodes in, in Nuke. And we also have these card parameters, which we can collapse and expand. And effectively what card parameters are, they're, they're, they're the equivalent value for the scale control of, of a card node, for example. And these are really necessary for reproducing the horizontal scale, which effectively allows us to use a calculated lens distortion, uh, or the values of a calculated lens distortion, to distort an image that we were projecting onto a card within the 3D, uh, within the 3D mode in, in Nuke. So I'll turn that off for now. And we'll take a look at our first uh, first method for uh, for lens distortion or undistortion. We can see along the top of this that we actually have three other tabs in here, and these are essentially the the other three 
lens distortion workflows that we have available to us from within this nose. And we're going to start with the image analysis. So in this mode, effectively the uh, the, the 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 nuke actually uh, auto, auto automatically analyzes the clip on a pixel by pixel basis. So it'll only really work because it does a comparison from frame to frame. It will only work if this is a multiple frame sequence. It wouldn't work on a on a still image. And I would say this is probably the least favored of the three uh, of the of the three approaches. Um, but we'll take a look at how it works. So I'll just take that uh, take that out, and I'll just bring the, bring this in and just hook this up. So it's actually replacing the one that I did before. Um, so this sits in the uh, this sit, this sits in in here. Okay. So this is my image analysis. Now the first property that we see inside here is a mask option. Now this works in a quite a similar way to uh, to 3D tracking. In in other words, it's actually going to generate sort of tracking points from within this in order to calculate the lens distortion on a frame by frame basis. Now because we've got moving elements within this, primarily the people, we need to actually isolate those from the from the solve. And this is what this uh, this roto that I've prepared in advance is there for. So there's two ways that we could do this. We could use the uh, we we could use the the mask uh, the mask pipe from the from the lens distortion node and if we were using that then the mask source we would choose would be mask alpha and that would isolate out the contents of the of the spline or the splines in this particular case it would isolate those from the from the uh, the solving process okay i'll just turn that uh, turn that roto back off um, if we wanted to isolate everything except the contents of the uh, of the splines, then we would go. We would invert the mask alpha. Um, I'm not actually going to do that. I'm going to follow the classical new tradition of putting everything in the pipe. So uh, I'm going to. Uh, I'm just going to put that in there. Um, and what that means then is that I'm actually choosing this as a source alpha. And again, if I wanted to do the polar opposite, I would invert that. So you can see that we've also got a Luma option, so we can uh, isolate areas of brightness as well as our areas of transparency from this. But I'm, ju I'm just going to stick with this. So I'll just connect my uh, my viewer. Where on earth is the viewer? There it is. So it's already connected to the bottom, and I'll just come out of this a little bit, and we'll take a look at some of the other parameters. So what we have here is the analysis range. So what we can do here is we can choose the entire uh, the entire image sequence, or we can just choose a section of the image sequence to uh, to perform this analysis. What we also have down here is an option to choose a nodal pan, rotation only, or a free camera. We know this is actually a moving camera, so we need to choose that, and that's pretty much it. So what we do then is just hit the analyze sequence button, and away the thing will go. Okay. Now it's done that because I'm um, I'm currently not in NukeX, which is a, a little bit of a cock up on my part. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to pause the screen capture and reopen NukeX and reopen this script within it. Okay. So many apologies for that. I'm now in NukeX. You can see here. So I can come back to my lens distortion, back into my Im image analysis. We're currently set. We've got the source alpha, so we're ready to analyze the sequence. So away we go. We can see this. We can see how, how similar this is now to a uh, a camera track. It's essentially uh, scanning scanning the image, and it's doing comparative analysis from frame by fr frame in order to establish any barrel or inverted barrel distortion. Okay. Now that's just going to track its way through. It'll take a minute or two. So I'm just going to pause the screen capture now and come back when the thing finishes. Okay. So the whole thing's finished. Um, and we can see the effects of this. We can see that something's happening around the outsides there. If we go back to the lens distortion property, we can see that the ra radial distortion on, on on one and two and the distortion center have actually now been populated with some uh, with some parameters. And also, if we drop down the card parameters, we can see that there are some values in here as well. And what they are essentially are are the computational. Uh, values that the that the systems worked out as it's gone through and analyzed that using the uh, using the image algorithm. So if we now 
just select our lens distortion node and we just hit the D to toggle on and off we can see exactly what's happening that is the that it that's turned off so that's if we come back to the end so we can just see a little bit more of the of the image we can see that turned off that's our that's our image with the original distortion on and if I hit the button again to toggle to toggle the lens distortion on then that's the undistorted plate okay so that is image distortion or more precisely image based analysis so we'll wrap up at this point and in the second part of the tutorial we'll take a look at grid analysis